Hello, everyone. Welcome to session 13 vlog of the Anthonyum Tabletop Campaign and your host, Hark. <laughs> Hello. Once again, thank you very much for everybody putting so much time and effort into your costumes. You look marvelous. Marvelous. Uh, where do you want to start? How do you want to kick things off today? Mm. Um... How about the beginning? Just everyone's state coming out of Black Powder's world. Mood yeah. was pretty low. It was, it was <laughs> tough. It yeah. was tough. Um, and I think for Frankie, it was a it was a challenge balancing like the bad things that have been happening, but also he's suffering from this like sugar rush, the sweetness rush. Mm -hmm. So he is like conflicting. Like, how do I handle this? Yeah. yeah. I did definitely notice that Ferenki was being a little extra sweet, uh, and uh, Star was being a little extra salty, mm -hmm. so good job on those. Um, I want to say that um, Sam Spicious is my new favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I, like, I like Star in a Jar. Yes, yeah, Star, Star in a Jar! jar. <laughs> that was great. Star in a Jar. That was brilliant. That was so good. good. Oh my god, yeah. I it's like, like it. it's like Cat in the Hat. That's a new book. That's an off yeah. off Star spin off the book. Is Star in the Jar? <laughs> That's Star Star's new head. album. Star's <gasps> new album. Star in the Jar. Would you like Star to sing pop? Would you like Star singing <laughs> to sing not stop? Would you, right, like, exactly. would you like the song here or there? Would you like oh, the song man. anywhere? <laughs> you know those marketing yes. campaigns where like they'll have like a doll of a celebrity. Mm -hmm. What if that's what it is? It's star in star, star, in star, and you press a button and they sing a random song. That's <laughs> that needs to be a thing. Merchandising. I support this. Merchandising. Dude, I support like, this. That needs to be. Would you like it on a stage? Would you yes. like it from a page? That oh my God. that needs to be in the epilogue. Is your part of your marketing is star in the jar like product placement? Mm -hmm. That would be yes. amazing. <laughs> Everyone's gonna have one at their house. It's like the elf on the shelf. Everyone yes. has to have it now. You've yep. heard of Elf in the Shell. Yeah. How about <laughs> yeah. Star in a Jar? Are you ready? Star in the Jar kits and then uh, a uh, How to Escape a Kidnapping Kit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I co sign oh, all of this. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. I still can't get over how amazing everyone looked today. Right. Yeah, everybody did so good on their costumes. So yes. good. Uh, I, I was trying to get bigger wings, but sadly, these are the only ones I can find. And I took a photo. Those are Photoshopped wings. Those are not the actual wings I wish that I had. But yeah. <laughs> oh, that's all good. No, I was going to say yes, at certain angles, because the wings would tilt forward. And for a moment, they looked like uh, almost fey ears. <laughs> oh, yeah. Exactly. Cute. Yeah, they were like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> and of course I had to make my hat myself but it looks yeah, it's really uh, cool it's so good but mm -hmm. everything else is just store bought I had two notes for a vlog one was when uh, Frankie was talking about Tori Talonic and he was like oh and then she was like fuck off and I was like okay but then she died <laughs> Like, yeah, that was, that was the best <laughs> bit of just solo Frankie comedy in the sentence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was very funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it could be worse. I mean, you could just die. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was your other one? Um, Star and Tori singing. That was yes. so good. We oh, had so that good. plan for a while now. Yeah. That was so cute. I love it. And I love that, the, the original song too. So it's a really good choice. Uh, how long did it take for you both to create the song? That was mostly Micah. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Um, I came up with the, the opening verse and a good friend of mine who's been helping me with the, with the song, his name is Link the Viking. Um, he mainly wrote the lyrics and then we had to change the lyrics because of things that happened in black powder's world and then 
um, Emily's lovely husband, who happens to be a professional in the <laughs> musical world, helped us out with a few other verses. So technically it's Link, Chris, with a little sprinkling of Micah there. And, and, and Emily. We're, it was an amazing like, collab. It was amazing it collab. Was I love it. it was so that good. Was so so yeah. good. Thank you. I had fun. Thank I just wish I was better. So I could sing it more uh, stronger. You oh, sounded you, you, you were great. fine. Yeah, you, you sounded, still sounded great. good. And we can always record it later too if you really yes. want. But I actually, yeah, record it if you all want to record it and then just send it to me. That'll come out clear, and I can just yes. again yeah. reverse. We had originally it. intended on doing it probably what was it right after uh, Tori's world, and so the mm -hmm. lyrics little a lot different and then of course uh we decided to hold off and then after black powder's world we we're like we gotta change some things because a lot has happened since then <laughs> absolutely so, well yeah. thanks for bringing music back too I, yeah, oh, yeah. that was great oh yeah I, I thought it would be fun and like the whole idea of like the ballroom like the spooky ballroom i thought what that's what me and emily were talking about we were trying to figure out how to how to make it fun but like a, a blend of the two you know stars over the top and yeah, I, I thought that would be a fun, fun idea. <laughs> yeah, it gave me this very like interview with a vampire esque feel, oh, like New Orleans gothic vampire. Like, like I was, yes, I was living for it. I, I very much got the great. vibe of like a vampy version of the ballroom scene from The Labyrinth. Oh yeah, you yeah, get out much. of my head! I swear to you, that was the source <laughs> of my inspiration. <laughs> I kid you not. And like David Bowie singing, like, yes. I was going to say, like, let's be honest, Star is very much David Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My inspiration. Nice. nice. Um, uh, another thing I wanted to talk about was that uh, all of the conversations that were had, I, I think I love Frankie and, and, and Black Powder's conversation. I thought that was just, it was so good. Like I would just, I was eating it up personally and I love their relationship between one another. And I love the fact that black powder said, I love you, but you know, it's just, it's such a cool relationship. I, I I'm, I'm loving it. And I love the conversation Alonic had with Sam at the beginning was really good. All of the convos are good. And I'm, if I'm skipping over stuff, it's because time, but yeah. I, I just really thought those conversations, all of them, I think were just amazing. And also Black Powder is the sweetest. He gave a star hug, like for real, for real. Oh. They're bae now. <laughs> just, I, I, think, <laughs> I've, I've, I figured out who Black Powder is now. Yes. Awesome. Um, the, the only other thing was multiple conversations Lana had with people. Um, Cause it, it, it's hard putting your character's heart out there. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And you did it a lot this session, and I know it couldn't be easy, but mm -hmm. I think there was some really good, like, whole conversations, some really good, like, little moments, and it was it yeah. was all very touching. And Adam, I know you felt you felt guilty because I'm assuming you felt like you were hogging a lot of the spotlight today, but honestly, like, you're you came in later, and that's kind of necessary um, for you to just do a whole bunch of role playing with people just to play I some catch up. I kind of got that from now that the videos where since Lonic's introduction have started to come out mm -hmm. that <laughs> like I get so worried that I'm taking up too much spotlight or too much of the stage that I end up just sitting there and doing nothing for a long period of time. And so I was trying to not do that this time. <laughs> But in RP Heavy, it did mean that there were a lot of times where I couldn't exactly mix everybody in. Mm -hmm. This was the perfect session to do it, right? Yeah. Because the other yeah. sessions, we were like on a mission. We had like bigger fish to fry and it was hard to get to know each other. That's the part, hard part. Yeah. And I didn't plan this for you specifically, but I think the fact that you got cursed with the lying curse made it harder for you to have really meaningful oh, role play yeah. was tough. Was so so hard working through the line first yeah, that that was why i was i didn't originally plan on curing your curses like by sending you to the fountain to that to that hot springs but i thought i really need to get rid of some of them just because i know that people like adam for example are struggling a little bit so i had to cure some of you so i had three curses that was Nobody a good call, else had more than one yeah. 
that's why I want to keep an eye on Joe for the next world because I don't want to force him into being mute the whole time if it's not fun. So far, it seems like Joe is just like Joe. Yeah, you're I like the little it. It. with I your mimes. He's the mime. I'm all like, about it. It, it was, okay, I can't lie, the miming was extra funny considering you are basically in grease paint. <laughs> it's, <laughs> like, it's, it all yeah, it's like, and mimes tend to be black and white. <laughs> yeah. They tend to be black and white. So. <laughs> like, that makes it all the more just hilarious. You're, yeah. you're definitely owning it, and it's fun. Like, I'm trying to keep a straight face, but I'm like, oh so, my god. <laughs> Here's what I want from you, Joe, if you're up for the challenge. I want you to send me your version of a monologue, but with you not being able to speak. <laughs> I want to see what your non-spoken oh, monologue is going to be. That'd be amazing. Oh, my, so many, oh my god, no, like a flip book? Send a flip book? Like, oh my god, there's so many cool oh, things you can do. Yeah. So cool. Cool. Just like big note cards. <laughs> yes! Or big note, oh yeah, note cards. I support you. Know what you would do. It's so much fun with that. Yeah, have fun with it. <laughs> yeah, that, Gosh, yeah, that, that would be amazing. Too. Yeah, definitely. There's a, uh, I would love that. There's an app on the internet where you can <laughs> put dialogue in the mouth of any Phoenix Wright character. And it makes like the little noise as the text scrolls across the screen. You could do that because you're in a lawyer situation in your own world and just paint it black and white. That'd be hilarious. I love that. Uh, I loved Veed like going berserk, like cabin fever <laughs> crazy. It's hilarious. Yes. <laughs> Poor Veed. Hilarious. We gotta check that rug. We gotta check that rug. <laughs> but that was the thing I was gonna say. The uh, what was it? Lonsu. I I love it. Hashtag Lonsu. So I, I support I like it. That. That's a cute. That's a cute like show. That. Yeah. Yes. I love I how it's progressing. It. It's yes. Yeah. It. If people are saying, "Oh, your move isn't isn't aren't they moving a little fast?" Well, again, I'm I'm riding on the visual novel genre where you just kind of fall in love with people really quickly just by telling them all the right things and get all the pluses, all the plus hearts. So I'm kind of like explaining it that way that says, "Yeah, they are going relatively fast, but they kind of do that in visual novels too." Yeah. So. Or like in The Sims, also like you start yes. to pick like hug, like he has blah blah blah, and you're right. like. I'm in love with you, like that's yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, yeah, ex exactly like that. Yeah, it's very love do me. <laughs> the um, the whole uh, Veed having this like cabin fever crisis was very therapeutic for me because, I mean, everyone can relate. Um, I definitely, as an extrovert during the pandemic, has been like. If I was thinking to myself, if I had to quarantine and it was just me alone for two months, I just channeled that. I'm like, I would just go nuts. Yeah. I'd go crazy nuts. Like you couldn't call anyone or, t oh yeah. my God. I may, I may burn out the kitchen purposely just for like some excitement. Right. Just for some excitement. I mean, jeez. Excitement and to have a very attractive fireman show up talking about, sir, that's, the kitchen that is on fire. That helps true. Yeah, <laughs> those red suspenders, those red suspenders, man. It reminded me a little bit of like in the beginning of Tangled, how Rapunzel is like, yes, I've done everything and it's only like yes. 9 a.m. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I've read every book, I've painted the walls. I've yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Or even Anna in the beginning of Frozen, where she's that's right. like, that's right. hey, whatever the name of the painting she was talking yeah. to. Hey, Joan. <laughs> hey, Joan. 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 Hey, Joan. <laughs> Hang in there, Joan. <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh man, Sue it. was amazing. Sue mm -hmm. and Mead were on point this session. Yeah. I miss them in Black Powder's world. Yeah, right? I miss them less yeah. in sessions. Although, probably going there would have been terrible for them. Probably. Oh yeah. <sighs> they would not have come out liking Lonick with the way he behaved. Of course, Lonick might have behaved differently if they had been there. Given given the mood that everybody was in coming back, I think it was helpful having her be a little bit more upbeat and unaffected by the Black Powder World stuff um, to help people out uh, before you jump into Lonix World, which is very different, very yeah. different tonally. Worlds, basically. Worlds, tonally. Jeez. It's going to be a mess. Uh, I, I really appreciate all the uh, notes about Lonix World because I'm just like, I'm so sorry. I'm breaking everything. 
what were you saying, Alex? I was going to say, I really do appreciate Joe having Sam recommend a nice family dinner. Yes. Yeah, yes. that, was, that yes. was great. That was that was very important. That gets yes. everyone together again, because we, we really all like went our separate ways as soon as we came back. And Sam is like, all right, he's like the dad. All right, we all got a, we got a family dinner. Yeah. We got a family talk. <laughs> right. That was great. That was really I know great. everyone's going through stuff, but you know what? You all, we all need to eat together. You don't have to talk to each other. Just eat together in the same <laughs> table. Yep. You know. Oh. Yeah. How was school? That's star. Oh, fine. Okay. <laughs> I just remembered some Henry. Yes. I was gonna, oh, Henry. I was gonna <laughs> Emily Henry. doing the googly eyes on the doll was, was clutch. Was a clutch move. Right? Yeah. Yes. That was. So I was not good. expecting to talk to Henry. Like, right? It was crazy. I, I can't help but wonder, like, if you put the googly eyes on that brush that Star has. But then you talk to Stormy. Oh, I know. That's the idea. That's, That's what wonder. I thought too. That's why I was like, put it on something you own. Put it and on then, something like, you own. Yeah. I wonder what would happen if Tori put the googly eyes on one of the popsicle dolls for one of you. <laughs> oh, oh, um, oh I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That'd but it opens a door to like a lot of possibilities now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, she has dolls of the NPCs. That's just a lot of dolls to make. <laughs> Right. So that, in theory, could be tested out. But, um, I feel like your magic item got an upgrade. Yeah, it seems like it seems like the Google eyes uh, have been getting a lot of use. Oh yeah. So which which is good. Um, and it, hopefully, we'll find uses for the other objects other it as well. Created a sense of urgency now because now we realize that time is passing and mm -hmm. all the worlds we visited. Mm -hmm. So that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> kind of lit a fire under all of our butts. <laughs> kudos to you, Hark, for being able to like you're rolling, like you're bringing it on. I, I really, that's good. I I was hinting at it a little bit when you realized that months had passed as well for, for V. Like, mm -hmm. in, real, yes. in real time, so I was sort of nudging that, and it was neat that you all got some confirmation yeah. that it was happening yeah. everywhere else too. That change that really did change everything. Uh, that confirmed a theory I've had for a while that the world's continued on after we left. Yeah, but you know, we. But it makes it really nerve wracking now. <laughs> what can happen? But you also learned, you also learned some interesting things from Veed in that time. He mentions like time is sort of like non existent a little bit. <laughs> like, yeah, he can feel months passing, but he ate so many gallons of ice cream and he should be showing that he's eaten so many gallons of ice cream but no he still looks the same that he did before so um oh, so that's, that's, thing. That's, that's, that's an interesting question if Stu or Reed had something affect their body type would it affect the other one yes it would it would yeah. so if one of them gained a few pounds the other one would gain a few pounds or lost that makes, an arm may wonder too if years and years mm -hmm. yes. go by if they would age at all in this yeah setting. you could if, if yeah that's right if you would age at all if you just stayed here the whole time probably not i hope that that wasn't too confusing or didn't change too much whenever sue was talking with lonic and asked like so we're gonna save your princess right and he's like i don't think that would fix the world it's no it was i i love that you say that because that's the obvious thing they're supposed to help you with but maybe there's more maybe it's deeper than that mm -hmm. personally i think it's gonna revolve around dr ganvani oh no lado's somewhere in this world for me oh, i no, think lonit i think lonit's gonna like i don't know be able to make his own choices and gain his own, own autonomy in this game that's what i kind of predict is gonna happen yeah like what if instead of like, what if it turns out that instead of fighting Dr. Gambani, you're like, hey, can we just, like, talk it out? <laughs> like, that would be really so against the video game, game algorithm. Or really you fight Dark Lonic. Well, we have a underwater cave full of treasure in um, Black Powder's world. That might be enough to pay off Gambani's debt. I don't know. I just get a sense like Lonic's situation is giving me like the Matrix feel. Like you've got to break from the system. Yes. Yes. Break from the system. And so I'm just seeing Lonic like as this Neo character. Like I got to bust it. Or blue. I got to bust it. And so basically Lonic ends up controlling the Matrix. Or, or I can see it because 
like Wanik said, never beat the last level. Like if beating the last level is basically the end of the game. And so now that there's no more game, Wanik can do whatever he wants. Right. Right. Yeah. Considering oh the, world, the rules Open I put in world. place for the last world, I am legitimately concerned about that, guys. <laughs> like Every out time. of character, I'm worried about the last le- the last world in Lonic's game. Maybe it becomes this enormous open world, open universe, open multiverse. That was the original concept yeah. I have. Uh, I had. I changed that. <laughs> no spoilers, but I have ideas. Yeah, of There's... what's happening at the end. I have thoughts. <laughs> <of> what's <laughs> so much that can happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to say uh, Lonic with. Those are some great conversations, Adam, that you had. I think it was important. This was a great session for that because your character had- I love had... the conversation that Lonic finally got to have with Frankie. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. a lot of it is Frankie, sometimes things go over his head. He's not like, it, it, he's a kind of in the moment type of a character. Um, it, he doesn't put, he, he's not a strategist, tactical. I mean, he's kind of learning a little bit from some people, but you know, he really isn't. He's just, <laughs> he's in the moment. But, you know, this was great for Lonic to be able to branch out and get the other characters to learn who Lonic is. And I think that was critical. Because trust is important. And all our other characters had, like, sessions to build that trust. Mm -hmm. Tori can't look at Lonic. I know. (laughs) I I gotta ask. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. I had to do that. I gotta ask, Emily, how are your eyes doing? Oh. Uh, I mean, I can... can kind of see it's just like it's kind of like a white film over my eyes right now so oh, it, wow. everything but just looks brighter they're not irritated or anything because i know that can happen with first time contact use only in putting them in and yeah since they've been in it's okay. fine <laughs> i can't take- wait to take them off <laughs> i was gonna say yeah. good luck with the taking out part <laughs> so i have a trick part. for that because i used to have to wear contacts whenever i wrestled and that's that i would oh. close my eyes and push the contact to the white because it's a lot easier to touch the white of your eye than it is your pupil and iris. Yep, that's uh, that's exactly what Chris told me too. He wears contacts all the time. Yeah. What were you, what were you saying, Joe? Oh, just that I always liked taking contacts out. It always <laughs> felt so good. Mm, mm-hmm. To be great to take off the costumes in general. After. Yes, I agree. Like this wig definitely is going to feel great when I don't have it anymore. <laughs> um, I wanted to give a little bit of a little bit of uh, back uh, back behind the scenes explanation on the fractured prune story. So many of you probably um, saw a lot of Ron Ronmo and half in the storyline, but um, in locally where I live, I don't think this is a chain, um, but there's actually a donut shop called the fractured prune which is which actually despite the name it's a delicious delicious donut shop because they specialize in um customizable donuts very much like cold stone you can like customize ice creams to make like apple pie donuts or peanut butter maple bacon donuts or things like that because they have tons of different frostings tons of different toppings um but the reason it's called the fractured prune is because it used to be owned by this older lady um, who I think I think like over time the customers lovingly nicknamed her the fractured prune and she actually like really liked that nickname and so I think they rebranded their place to be called the fractured prune and then I thought well you know Sue's got this purple thing that she, this purple allergy thing, and I immediately thought, oh, that would be the name of the monster, is the Fractured Prune. That's so that's where that came from. Yeah. Nice. I, I, I can't lie, when um, you mentioned that there were multiple Todds in Lonix World, my first thought was like, oh, don't tell me it's basically gonna be the utter situation is the big bad boss. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that. I wasn't even thinking that. Wow. Now that would be an interesting BBE, uh, BBEG. Oh no! Happens every time. And now we're in Lonix world, and things are going to get crazy. 
And I hope you don't mind me using that meta knowledge just because it's been in character for Wanek. Yes. No, I love... Be as meta as you want. I've, I totally have been super meta with the whole bit with Todd being like, you can't break into my house. Only the main character can do that. Like, I'm <laughs> totally meta. So please do as much as that. As like, you can. So, it's so appropriate. I've been trying really hard to have none of it be advantageous necessarily. It's just observations. Yeah. It's for the comedy of it, which is je- technically what your genre is. It's for the comedy. So anything else before we close um i really enjoyed the group conversation whenever i mean i know i did a lot of that conversation but i really enjoyed talking to the whole group in was it in black powder's room or was it in star's room it, it like started in black powder's room and then came upstairs. Yep. <laughs> slowly <laughs> grew. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Despite how quickly everyone split up at the very beginning, there was a lot of just good group moments today. Yeah. I did like the reaction that I got from uh, from Tori, and I think I can't remember, was it Tori and Frankie that Lonick said? He does, he's, I think it was Tori and Black Powder when Lonick said that he's kind of ready to die. Oh, I think that was Frankie that- and Black Powder. I think yeah. that was, that was in the whole group thing. That was in the whole Actually. group thing. Oh, yeah. was it? it? Oh, gosh. Well. I was it, kind of inspired by a Star Trek Voyager episode for that concept. There's a, uh, there's a race called the Q in Star Trek, which are basically a race of people that are like Marvel's Loki. If they had a lot more power. They snap their fingers and alter reality. <laughs> And in Voyager, there's an episode where they meet a Q who's literally done everything that can be done in the universe. And he's just like, I'm so tired. I just want to die. I'm so tired. Death is the one journey I've yet to take. And I'm like, that's frightening. (laughs) But I like it and I want to use it. And it's, it's interesting because it's a little bit of a parallel to Black Powder. Because when mm-hmm. Frankie heard that, and then again, the conversation Frankie had with Black Powder, it was like, what is this? <laughs> Why are people so ready to just give up? Because like, Frankie is not about just giving up either. So it, it feels like they're ready. We've done it all. We're ready to go. And it's like, no, yeah, like, reinvent I, I, yourself. I like that parallel as well because at least with Lonic like once he gets his free will that he has a whole plethora of brand new things to experience he doesn't realize how little he's done he's just been trapped for so long he's been a slave like I I do think like because it was slightly touched on but there is a difference between someone who's basically lived the same life over and over again and someone who's just lived a very long life yeah yeah, because I think Black Powder brought that up yeah it's like yeah I remember Black Powder saying that yeah, like it was touched on, but very much like Black Powder isn't like ready to give up, but he's very much like if I I know I don't have much longer left because he yeah. is he's very old for his time period. So like he's very much aware of like I don't have much longer left. I'm gonna die going out the way I want to now. No, that's why Frankie was like, I want to give you another chance. Like you you know get more life, get more years back. Come to my yeah. world. You know what um, I mean? Like. But, like, yeah. just straight up, though, like, if it's possible, Black Powder would go back to Star's world and spend his Twilight years. I, I know. I had, I'd figured that, too. I'd figure that, too. But, you know, Frankie's Unless being a little bit Unless you could somehow bring Taylor to Frankie's world, but then that's <laughs> just a whole other mess. Part of, part of, part of the reason why um, the decision was made to have time eventually move forward is because you'll probably you can probably presume that you all can end up wherever you want you don't have to stay in your own world but um i wouldn't necessarily allow you to double dip so it's not like you can live a whole lifetime in this world now you can live a whole lifetime in this world like so you kind of have to pick and choose yeah, you know makes sense. where you want to be that's kind of oh yeah I'm so oh I'm, as a player i, I know that bug yeah. potter would go to yeah t- t- to taylor yeah 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 Makes sense. I just had a really cool thought for how time would affect Lonic. Have you ever seen like the really, really old um 
oh, what are they called? Like the old Tiger Electronics special like pager game machine things where over time they lose like lines of screen realty. I could see that happening with Lonic as he gets older, just lines start to form along his body of just darkness. I just thought he would be rendered more. He'd be <laughs> rendered higher resolution, but maybe that's fine too. I wanted to say uh, Sam's dream. Uh, it's just nice to learn a little bit more about yeah. Sam, even though none of us in character know yeah. about it. I know that's the thing is that we, we saw the picture. That's like, mm -hmm. as far as we know is, we know something with that young little waitress. Like with, with Sam I've always off. been glad that the party decided, or yeah, that the party did like go through the office and have to have me explain stuff. That was always, or up to this point, I was like, ooh. Nobody's <laughs> asked you yet. Yeah. Well, yet. I asked in his dream and he didn't quite tell me. I, I mm, failed an insight I check. Remember. Mm, okay, okay. Why do I have a sneaking suspicion that the person that Sam would be most likely to open up to would be Lonic because he knows he'd forget it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> With us. like, I'm going to tell you everything. You're not going to remember any of this. No, with uh, Sam also opening up the democracy <laughs> chat, which was so oh. nice <laughs> after the argument that happened mm -hmm, after yeah. Lonic first showed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if we're, we're slowly going to be able to actually get to know more of actual Sam instead of Sus Sam. That'd be nice. Right, Sus Sam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cuz right now he's still very Sam sus. <laughs> did um did Sam talking to Aaron about change? Did that affect his decision to do something a little bit more democratically the next morning? Did that affect that at all? Um so yes in many ways, but um especially after Everybody got so upset for him not offering Black Powder's bookmark early. I mean, he was surprised that really everybody got upset that they didn't have a say in that play. So it was a combination, um, but that kind of like cemented it. Um, but with that being said, um, he did right off the bat... Um, start thinking as soon as he got back how can he uh oh, what's a good way to put this how can he start um letting other people feel like they've got a stronger um sway over him too so that's why if anybody noticed he didn't vote at all he was just going to follow the Follow the majority. Was it was uh, a little bit curious? Does um, the time that we spent in Sam's world have some of that also an impact? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Because I have seen a change as a player. You know, when we went into Sam's world, like Sam, you were like, give, you were like black powder. You were giving orders. You're like, you go there, you do this, you do this, you do this. Oh yeah. But then. <laughs> You know, Sam getting locked up, he had, he was forced to rely on us to do things for him. And it's like, learn to trust the group, learn to trust each other. Oh, yeah. Speaking of that, I've, uh, I wonder if you guys have noticed I've been doing something with my voice for Lonic's transformations. Yes. Oh yeah, 100%. Whenever yes. I go back to, whenever Lonic is himself, I always use the Lonic voice, but whenever he's not himself, he speaks yeah. with an accent appropriate to that farm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't do that in this world <laughs> because this is Lonic's world. Right, right. So, um, wary. No. <laughs> well, hopefully that'll make things easier for you for now. But it sounds like we're revisiting a whole bunch of worlds that you haven't visited yet. Oh, so I probably will have. I'm legitimately fun. extremely excited to go to Frankie's world at this point because I have some mm. plans. 
I have okay. some ideas. It's going to be terrible nope. and awesome. Okay, it's too bad. Nope, fair Mike is not here because I had an idea for a star in Frankie's world. Maybe get him a prosthetic hand or something. So mm-hmm. many things, all the high tech stuff it exists kinda, there. So it kind of seems like ultra tech. The worlds we need to bring pieces of pieces or aspects of each world either into another or vice versa to solve a lot of the problems. Like if the extra life thing really does save Tori, then that's Lonix world helping Tori. But how would Tori's world help any of the other worlds? Oh no. <laughs> maybe we just Good send question. Maybe deals to Tori's world and that's how it helps. Well, I think you know the lesson at least that I saw for Frank, I don't know about everybody else. But it, it, the lesson was rely on other things because we were not allowed to use a lot of our powers. Yeah. You had to figure it out on your own. Be clever. Wing it. Like it tested your metal. Um, yeah, like Tor- that's- Tor- Tori's world, I think, definitely encouraged thinking outside the box in terms yes. of how to yeah. succeed, which yes. I think would be very useful in something like Sam's world where a lot of the law and whatnot is very stringent. Yeah, it was good. I do have to say, um, having Sue talk to Tori about like, hey, if you need help with that thing. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I can see Emily. You're like, she's been there. I can't can't talk about this. (laughs) She's been there, though. That was so funny. That was so funny. Yeah, but it was appropriate. I kind of was happy that you still left that conversation. Not 100 (laughs) percent okay with each other. So, yeah. Yeah. Keep I it going say, for plot purposes. <laughs> I yeah, you have to keep it going for plot the, purposes. Yeah. On the con- on the topic of Sue, I was trying to. I, I did want like their relationship to evolve naturally. I was originally hoping that it would hold out until we got to Star's World, because Lonix form in Star's World is going to be great. <laughs> And by great, I mean the worst abomination I've literally ever put to paper. (laughs) Before I have to duck out, I wanted to just mention I'm really glad I had those two fairly small moments with Star and Tori. When Tori came to Black Powder's dream and then the moment with Star. I was really happy I had those. It was so simple, but just like, hey, you want some food? Come into my dream. It was was simple but effective. I've been thinking about that for like sessions and i was like well why doesn't he just go well, he yeah now that he's no longer distracted by his world stuff he can be a dad Aww, that's exactly dad why she's like man this reminds me of like when i bake pies with my dad like it was just perfect yeah, that that's very much what i've learned black powder is he's spent so much of his life being bad <laughs> kind of harsh and cruel now he can finally be nurturing which i think is closer to who he was naturally but what you're to be. saying is that the door is open and he can finally be sweet oh he would never ah. admit it <laughs> he's better he's not perfect he will still <laughs> cheat you at cards <laughs> He'll use the Micah. He'll he'll use the game Micah. I'm but, so oh, glad that joke landed. But he's he's very much learned that he can give something to the rest of the group that's more than just his intelligence. It's mm-hmm. life experience. It's guidance. It's comfort, and that's what he endeavors to be from now on. From from bad to dad. From bad to uh, dad. From bad to dad. Nice. Daddy, daddy. There's your dad joke. There it is. 